Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and a huge week of news it has been. We, of course, have a lot more SpaceX Starship updates to cover, but in addition to that, we're talking about parachute systems for both the Crew Dragon, as well as Boeing's Starliner, which has just had its pad abort test the other day. Then to top all this off, we have an actual SpaceX Falcon 9 launch happening very shortly with the upcoming Starlink mission, which is going to break a few records as well. There is loads to cover here, so let's get stuck into it. The Starship in Boca Chica is starting to really come back together now. SpaceX has reconnected the two nose fins, which will be used to control the Starship in the skydiver style landing shown by Elon Musk in his presentation back in September. Also, we can now see the reaction control systems in place here. Later in the week, the aero covers were placed up here as well. This is a good sign that the nose is being finalized in this area. They did also take the covers back off for some adjustments but it's back up there again now, so great news there. We're still awaiting some news on when the lower control surfaces will be installed onto the bottom section of the Starship, which was moved over to the launch pad the week before. If you'd like to check that video out, I've covered this last week. You'll find that in the recent released videos. And while you're here, please do consider subscribing because I could not create this content without you. And there is so much news to share right now. It's only going to get busier. So yes, I suspect SpaceX is intending to largely finalize the nose section before it gets rolled to the launch pad to join the other half of the vessel. Based on the progress we are seeing here, I'm thinking around four weeks or so before this baby is going to fly. There is a huge amount of work to do, but what are your thoughts here? How long do you think this is going to be? I may well be being a little too optimistic. In Florida, not a great deal has changed from the outside view. This new footage from John Wincup, we can see here a new ring has been added up on the lower section of the Mark II Starship. The dome that has been laying around here is likely going to be stacked back up on top fairly soon as well, so I can't wait for some more progress to be seen here from Florida. On November 5th, Elon Musk spoke at the US Air Force Space Pitch Day where he dropped an interesting piece of information. Elon's saying here that the Starship and Super Heavy will use only $900,000 worth of propellant to launch into low Earth orbit. He said that if you consider operational costs, maybe it'll be around $2 million for each launch. This is much less than even a tiny rocket, and although this figure may be aspirational for now, if SpaceX can achieve a $2 million dollar launch cost in the near future, this will be revolutionary. Think of something as simple as a tourist mission that could launch 100 people into orbit and back. At a ticket price of $20,000, this is something I'm willing to bet a very large number of people in the world would be extremely excited about. A lot of news this week with both SpaceX's Crew Dragon as well as Boeing Starliner. Both companies are pushing forwards to meet all of the criteria required to put humans back into a vessel that can launch from the United States. For people that don't follow all this as closely as we all do, it's often surprising to them that the United States hasn't had the capability to launch astronauts from American soil since 2011 when the last flight of the space shuttle took place. Back in 2014, contracts to fly astronauts astronauts in newly created vessels were awarded to SpaceX and Boeing. It seems to have been a long road to get from that point to where we are here today, but we really are seeing a lot of progress going on right now. Boeing Starliner capsule is, of course, SpaceX's main competition in terms of crew transport capability to the space station. There have been significant delays plaguing both companies throughout the last few years, but both vessels appear almost neck and neck now in testing schedules. So it's going to be interesting to find out who will fly astronauts to the International Space Station first. Um, earlier in the year, it looked like SpaceX was clearly going to win that race, but it was uh, not until a test turned the very safe looking Crew Dragon vessel into a fireball here. Uh, this was essentially back to the drawing board for SpaceX. Starliner also had some quite major issues last year when hypergolic propellant leaks occurred due to several faulty abort system valves. They've been delayed a great deal because of some of these problems and just last week finally got to the pad abort test phase which we'll cover here in a moment. SpaceX at the same time now looks like they're getting very close to their in-flight abort tests. 
currently scheduled in late this month. Now, there has been a huge amount of talk over parachutes with SpaceX, and this week we saw some awesome footage of a shoot test here. The tweet from SpaceX told us that the team has completed 13 successful tests in a row of the upgraded Mark III parachutes for the Crew Dragon. This most recent test demonstrated the parachute system's ability to land the spacecraft safely in the unlikely event that one of the four main parachutes fail. Elon Musk's reply tweet to this clarified a few things, saying that this was currently the only multi-parachute test of the Mark III parachute design, so there's still nine more left to reach 10 successful tests in a row. If all goes well for the shoot tests and the in-flight abort tests, we may see some more concrete dates appearing for the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission, which will fly NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley on a 14-day test mission to the International Space Station. We're still awaiting some more concrete dates around the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. At this point, it seems unlikely to me that we will fly before the end of the year. Depending on how the in-flight abort test goes, it looks like we are likely to see this launch very early in 2020. So similar excitement this week with Boeing's Starliner vessel and its pad abort test. This is a trial run for the spacecraft's launch abort system designed to quickly get the crew and spacecraft away from the rocket in the event of a potential failure. This test needed to cover off on a number of criteria. As we can see from the animation here, the vessel first needs to fire its main launch abort engines, then test out the attitude control thrusters to ensure the vehicle is pointing the correct direction prior to deploying the actual shoots. Overall, the test seemed to be successful, but in my opinion there was a reasonably significant issue with the failure of one of the three parachutes. Um, Boeing fairly quickly tweeted saying uh, that although designed with three parachutes, two shoots opening successfully is acceptable for the test parameters and crew safety. Now afterwards they said they believed that the issue was caused in the deployment itself rather than the actual chute itself failing, but that seems pretty grey as an argument to me. If the chute didn't open, it failed. It doesn't really matter what the cause was. After further investigation, it was actually determined that in this case a pin wasn't attached correctly between the pilot parachute and the main parachute. This is what prevented one of the three from deploying. Boeing has already begun to modify the assembly procedures to include easy steps such as pull tests to make certain that all the pins are correctly attached. It was also stated that the technicians have already checked the pins on the Starliner destined to launch in the orbital flight test to the International Space Station. So, all said, the issue was not with the design or the architecture of the system, more a little carelessness in the testing process, something that can be immediately rectified. Good news there. Now, unlike most capsules that splash down in the ocean, Starliner has these airbags that rapidly inflate from underneath the capsule, and the intention is for it to land on the ground with these airbags, which then break the fall. That's not to say that landing on the ground is unique itself. The Soyuz, of course, lands this way, but rather than an airbag, the capsule fires two sets of small engines on the bottom of the vehicle a second before impact to slow the vehicle and soften the landing. Blue Origin's new Chevy Shepard uses this same technique as well. The next test flight for Starliner, I believe, is scheduled in December, and that is going to be an orbital flight test riding on an Atlas V N22, which is essentially a configuration of the Atlas V with two solid rocket boosters and no fairing. Just like the Falcon 9 and Dragon, there's really no need for a fairing with the capsule sitting on top. So finally we seem to have SpaceX's next Falcon 9 launch set for November the 11th and this is exciting because it's going to be the first Falcon 9 mission that will reuse a fairing from previous flights. The fairing of course is this huge nose cover that protects the payload from damage as it punches out through the thick atmosphere. It then separates after the vessel leaves the vast majority of the atmosphere behind. SpaceX tweeted out this amazing footage saying that the upcoming launch of 60 Starlink satellites from Pad 40 in Florida will be supported by the fairing that previously flew on Falcon Heavy's Arabsat 6A mission. Now, I'm not 100% sure if they mean both fairing halves or just one of them, but we'll likely get some more information on the 11th prior to the launch of the webcast. So, this flight is going to deliver the next set of 60 satellites into orbit for SpaceX's Starlink broadband network, and they will be joining the existing 60 satellites that were deployed back in May of this year. Not long to go now 
now until we see this launch so fingers crossed we aren't going to see any delays here because it seems like forever since we've watched a Falcon 9 launch and I've been eagerly awaiting the next Starlink deployment in particular. I mean check this out I just love how these satellites are all released like a huge deck of cards. I'm wondering if we're going to see any difference in the deployment this time around or whether it's going to essentially look exactly like the previous mission. The static fire of this booster was captured here as well. Now, this was the mission's first stage booster, which has already flown three times before. This fourth flight is going to be a record. No other Falcon 9 core has flown four times. And not only that, this is the first flight where we've got two fairing recovery ships in play. Both of these vessels, we suspect, will try to catch the two fairing halves. So this is going to be a very exciting launch, right? We've got a super interesting Starlink payload deployment, a record fourth booster flight, and a potential double catch attempt for the fairings. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how quickly this mission is followed up by the next Starlink launch. We've seen a number of rough schedules suggesting we may see a few more Starlink launches before the end of the year. What do you think though? Is this perhaps a little optimistic? Is SpaceX likely to be testing this second set for a month or so before screaming ahead with more launches? Let me know what you think in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please do take a second and hit that like button. A huge thank you to my awesome quality control squad shown here who are brilliant at picking up mistakes and are also letting me know when information is already out of date. It can be all a little hard to keep up with. If you're interested in these topics and you would like to be part of this, follow my Discord or Twitter link in the description and let's chat. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video talking about the very cool X-37B military vessel that returned last week, which was launched by SpaceX in 2017. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.